Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'll be doing a full setup on this Esheen Cinecan 4K Tiny Whoop. I've already set up a new model on here for my Cinecan HD. So let's get this in the right mode for binding, which is D8. Now if you remember, this has got the Crazy BF4 on it. And although it's the version three, you still need to bind this in D8. And if you haven't got D8 as an option on here, let's just select that, then you need to check out my video up here, which shows you how to upgrade the firmware to enable D8. And this is an EU LBT transmitter. It all works and it's pretty straightforward. So there we go, that's all done. Then we need to get this powered up and get to the bind button. And annoyingly, the bind button is on the other side of this board. So we're going to have to take this all apart to get to that. A bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. To get this apart, there's just three screws, one here, one here, and one on the front. Let's just get those off. Now this will just lift up, but be very careful because just down there is the Wi-Fi antenna for the Tarsier. And you can just push that off the frame. It's held on with some double-sided foam. To get this apart, you don't need to unclip all these cables, but just be very careful not to stretch them or get any kinks in them. You under need to undo this four screws holding the stack in place. And now those are off, you can just carefully lift that out of the way, making sure you don't kink any of the cables, particularly the camera and it is quite hard to see but the bind button is just there and fortunately everything will power up quite nicely off usb including the receiver it won't power the camera but it will power the receiver so if we plug this in on that side of the board there we go that red LED is flashing to say that it is not bound. And if we press the bind button, which is just there, there we go. The red LED has gone solid, which means it's in binding mode. Right, so we've got our model selected. Just page up, oops, page up and we've already got D8 mode selected. Put this into bind mode. And there we go. The LED is flashing to let us know that it has actually successfully bound. So we can exit that. And as a quick check, we can turn the transmitter off. Let's power off the quad. Power it back on again. And turn the Welcome transmitter the on. And there we are, it's gone solid. So we know that this is actually bound in D8 mode. Now I've just left the canopy off this just for the minute whilst I get everything set up. We've got our model and our receiver bound and the transmitter is turned on. So let's go over and take a look in beta flight and we can connect to the quad and just a quick check that that's all working that looks good let's see what we've got here so we've got two UARTs and that's one for smart audio excellent and configuration so look here, so we are props in, which is good, D-Shot 600. These are all the standard settings that come from Esheen. Nothing unusual here, 8K loop times. That's the model name. 
and this is the important part this is already set up so we've got um, SPI RX support which is great and FR Sky D is selected and that is the provider that we need for D8 if we were D16 we would choose FR Sky X but we're not going to do that because that will confuse us completely is turned on that's all good excellent those are all fine for now fail safe is set to drop pit tuning i'll look at this a bit later i'm just keen to see how their stock tune works out of the box receiver let's just make sure everything's working awesome obviously we've only got eight channels because we're in d8 yeah that's perfect good and just a quick check we are running beta flight 4.0.4 with the crazy b f4 fr which is the free sky on board target a quick look at the osd that's all fine i have actually been in here before and set this up so we've got rssi at the top here main battery voltage and current down there and the t2 timer and then we've got the model name at the top there good and um, warnings in the middle of course excellent so we can go out and fly that to configure the FPV camera the bottom sensor just plug in the OSD joystick into this bottom connector on here just down there and apply some power put your goggles on and press the joystick in the middle and just go through the menus and set it up as you want now the great thing about having a dual sensor is the setting that you have on the FPV camera is only on the FPV camera. So just set it up to how you want it, how it looks good for you, and so on. Setting up the HD camera, the top sensor, that's done over Wi-Fi using the CADEX app and that runs on iOS and Android. So the first thing we need to do is turn on the Wi-Fi on the CADEX. So it's pretty straightforward, just apply some power. And the way this works is there are two buttons here and you need to long press the back one for about five seconds and you know when it's in Wi-Fi binding mode because this LED on this side will start flashing then all you do is go to your device, go to your settings and Wi-Fi and it should pick up this Wi-Fi connection, there we are, CADEX, that serial number is unique for each of the uh, cameras and the default password is 12345678 connect and that is connecting so it is connected, that's great. No internet, obviously. So if we go back, thank you for telling me that. And we fire up the CADEX app and you can enter the camera. And there we go. We're getting a live feed off the camera. Obviously not all that good. One thing to watch out for, don't have a a, an SD card in here whilst you're doing that binding I found it doesn't actually connect properly once you're in here you can go to settings and you've got all sorts of stuff you can do in here you can change all the different resolutions uh, loop time audio on off video encode bear in mind if you use H265 the files will be massive so use that at your peril and there's a whole load of exposure, white balance and all the usual settings on here. So that's all good. And if we just come out of that. To start recording, you can obviously hit this. It says no SD card. The way that you do this in the field is on these two buttons here. You need to short press the back one. 
before we can do any recording we need an SD card obviously which plugs in just down there but the Tarsia is very sensitive to the type of SD card that you use and also how it's formatted you can't just plug it in and off you go it doesn't work like that for whatever reason I don't know but you need at least a U3 SD card that's a fast bit rate and don't use any no-name cards I tried a few that just didn't work SanDisk seem to be fine and you'll need something pretty big 32 gig at least uh, 16 gig you're gonna fill up if so quickly if you've got 4k footage so I've got a 64 gig one here now the weird thing is that this needs to be pre-formatted before it will work on the DVR in here and it needs to be formatted as FAT32 using 64k blocks now that's a weird combination because if you're using Windows you can't format anything bigger than 32 gig with 64k blocks so you will need to use a separate program to actually format this before you start so I'll show you how to do that grab yourself a copy of GUI format and I'll leave a link in the description where you can get hold of that it's a free Windows utility for formatting FAT32 storage that's over 32 gig make sure you've got the SD card drive selected and the allocation unit size is 65536 that's 64k choose quick format and hit start and after a few seconds the car will be formatted so now we've got that all formatted up and ready to go we just plug it into the SD card slot on the bottom of the DVR card and it's a bit fiddly there we go now if you don't format this correctly or it doesn't recognize the SD card the app will barf all the time and that's a pretty good indication that you haven't formatted that with the correct format so that's all done let's get this powered up let's go back to the Kedex app and we enter the camera and now you'll notice that up here it says we've got 61 gig available which wasn't there before and you can start and stop recording obviously in the app you just hit record and off we go we're recording marvelous we can stop it but to start and stop recording in the field if you look down here you'll see there's a green LED and it's solid that means it's not recording to start recording you need to hit the back button and just short press it there we go it's flashing indicating it's recording and you can see on here it's ticking away and then stop it recording simple you just short press it again and the green LED goes solid to indicate that it's not recording as usual thanks for watching and if you found that useful give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and if it's your first visit then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates I'll see you next time